It is time for my most favorite episode every month, and that is time to talk about what books I am reading. Welcome to Explore Your Enthusiasm, episode 260 with me, Tyra Swiger. Here we talk about lessons for your creative business so you don't feel so alone as you struggle with creating your own business and your own path in life. And once a month, I share what I'm reading. Uh, sometimes they're business books, sometimes they're novels. Today, it is a mix of all of the above. So uh, let's get started with a book that I read in a single day. I actually read it on Mother's Day. It's my first Mother's Day. It's a good day. Um, I read Abby Wambach's Wolf Pack. And I loved this book so much, I did a video just on the lessons I learned from it. You can find that over on my vlog on YouTube. It's tarasweiger.com slash YouTube. It says the eight lessons of Wolfpack. I'll link it up in the show notes, which you can find below wherever you're listening to and over on tarsweiger.com slash podcast 260. So I'll link up where I talk all about the eight lessons in Wolfpack. It was great. Abby Wambach is a um, soccer player on the national U.S. women's soccer team. So she's an Olympian. Um, she's a great writer. She's a speaker about leadership. And this is really, really a book about how um, to lead women, and everyone's a leader. So if you want to see women rise and do more of what they want to do with their life, whether that's in how they parent or how they take care of themselves or how they build businesses, this is the book to check out. Wolfpack. Wolfpack by Abby Wambach. It just came out like a month ago, right now. I have also been reading in the Cole Business Inspiration section, uh, Girl Stop Apologizing by Rachel Hollis. This book, I needed the message so much that um, I actually am holding a book club, or I held, by the time you listen to this, I held a book club on both the Starship and for my essential oil customers, because those are people who are dedicated to taking care of themselves and having more in their life of what they want and less of what they don't want. So this, which she calls a shame-free plan for embracing and achieving your goals, is just like right up our alley. I have gotten a lot out of it. Um, just a good reminder of a lot of things you might already know. It um, inspired me to create the most recent episode on the podcast, which is all about being unapologetic. Reminded me of a lot of things I talked about in the very beginning of starting my business, starting to talk to you about your business, and things that I just... When you go through hard times, it's easy to get away from, and it's easy to lose confidence in an area, and it's easy to make up excuses why you can't do it anymore. This book is a good call out on your excuses. That's Girl Stop Apologizing by Rachel Hollis. Now, the next book I read, which is not at all a business book, but it's a nonfiction book of uh, journalism, is The Child Catchers, uh, Rescue, Trafficking, and the New Gospel of Adoption by Katherine Joyce. Now, as I am... Um, being a foster parent, and eventually that might lead to adoption. I have really been looking into reading a lot of adoption memoirs. In fact, I'll talk about another one that I read here in just a minute. But um, this is a look at how international adoption works and doesn't work. And the thing about the new gospel of adoption is it talks about how the evangelical movement uh, the evangelical Christian movement really focused on what they call the orphan care crisis. And through promoting adoption, they increase the number of international adoptions, which is not always a good thing. Because um, when you're talking about international adoption, different countries have different systems. And often, the systems aren't set up to protect the children and the families of the people in those countries. So here in the States, we have a foster care system, which keeps kids from living in um, orphanages. Like we don't have orphanages in the States. Instead, children are placed in other people's homes, often in their own family's homes, just extended family, um, until either the parents can reclaim their children or um, until it moves on to adoption of those people adopting. But other countries don't have a system set up that is um, transparent and gives parents the chance and, and instead, they have institutionalized orphanages, which are a real problem. However, our cultural misunderstanding of how other countries use quote-unquote orphanages leads to um, some bad problems, like kids who aren't orphans, who actually have living parents who want to take care of them, being adopted out of those orphanages because cultures use orphanages in different ways. Um, so... 
there that um, leads to problems with kids being adopted when that's not actually what their parents signed up for. It also leads to um, deception and child trafficking when there is a bigger demand for children than there is supply. And reading about those issues, which certainly are not, um, they're not at all limited to the evangelical Christian movement, adoption movement at all, but they were exacerbated by the explosion of adoption within um, different parts of um, Christianity. So just reading about that, basically what you're reading about in this book is a supply and demand of kids in international adoption to the US and Europe. And that is crazy. There are so many problems, but there are also ways to fix it and shocks a lot to adult adoptees and how they feel about it. And if you are thinking about growing your family via international adoption, I really think you'd need to read this book to learn about the things to watch out for because there are absolutely many amazing, perfectly legitimate, legal, needed adoptions that happen internationally, but you want to know what to look out for, what is happening um, that you wouldn't want it that is unethical and things that are happening that are ethical. So read the, the child catchers. Um, even if you're not interested in adopting yourself, but perhaps you're part of a community where there's been a lot of adoption, I really recommend reading this so you can understand more of what um, the children in your community have gone through before they came to America. So that's The Child Catchers by Catherine Joyce. It's it's not fun. <laughs> it's serious. So next up in my nonfiction this month was the memoir by an adult adoptee, Nicole Chung. The book is called All You Can Ever Know. The author is Nicole Chung. She was a um, Korean adoptee. Her parents actually lived in America, put her up for adoption, um, kind of confused about the process. And then really the book is her journey as an adult adoptee reconnecting with her birth family and specifically her birth sister. So it made me cry at times. She decides to do it actually because she's having her own birth child and it's, it's making her feel more feelings for her own birth mother and want to know more about what her mom went through and the ties to that family. And it's not an idealized story of like reuniting and everything being great. She talks about her adoptive family and how much she loves them and how thankful she is for what they gave her, but also these holes that she feels. And also in the beginning about how growing up um, as the only Asian person in her whole community or in her whole school, the kind of racism um, that she was exposed to that her parents just did not expect and were not prepared for. So again, if you if you were thinking or even know anybody who's going through transracial adoption, I really recommend you reading the story of adult adoptees about their experience, not to scare you away, but so that you can be better prepared to help those kids and those families. So that's All You Can Ever Know by Nicole Chung. It's beautifully written. It's beautiful no matter if you're interested in adoption or not. You just like memoirs. It's gorgeous. Now, the last nonfiction book I want to share with you, I wish I had the copy here, but I had to return it to my library. It's called A Thousand Books to Read Before You Die by James Mustish. Mustache? Mustiche? Uh, it is a big book. It is essays on a thousand books. And it's got photos of the covers. It's got photos from the time period or for art related to the books. It's in alphabetical order. He picks a thousand books he thinks you should read before you die. And... Uh, my, my hesitation about even talking about this book, I, I don't talk about books that I don't like, by the way, all the books that I talk about here are books that I totally think you should read. Um, but the, the hesitation behind this book is obviously his a thousand books are going to be different from your a thousand books, or my a thousand books. And you can tell he's a baby boomer. So many of the, um, authors that he featured that aren't the classic books are uh, people that were born in between like the mid 30s and the 50s and their books were all published from the 60s to the 80s and um, so like a lot of the novels and a little bit of science fiction and memoirs and even nonfiction is written by baby boomers and so it's really I mean there are a lot of baby boomers, so it's kind of understandable, but it's really heavily weighted towards that. Um, but then there are also all of the classics and really beautiful essays about every single book. Like, the way he writes about books is 
Ugh, I was kind of studying it just to learn how to talk about books because he writes beautifully about every single book. Um, there's also uh, essays and kind of research about uh, specific authors. Um, so he talks about Jane Austen and not just one book from Jane Austen, but Jane Austen the author and what she meant to her time and then all of her books get a little essay. Also Proust, um, Tolstoy, you know, the classics, the big guys in uh, English literature. I guess Tolstoy was Russian, but you know what I mean. So uh, that's, it's just a great book. Like I want to have it on my shelf. I added it to my wish list for my birthday, which is when you listen to this is just in a couple days. Um, but it is, <laughs> That's a wish list my family has. It's A Thousand Books to Read Before You Die by James Mustish. I think having this book, if you're a reader and you like books about books, you can open it up kind of any day, anywhere, and read a beautiful essay about a beautiful book. And if you are just looking for more, like, great books to read, this book will have you adding things nonstop to your TBR list. Now, I also read a lot of novels in the last month, and here are some of my absolute favorites. So Megan Abbott. I have been loving Megan Abbott. She writes these kind of psychological thrillers that are a lot about young, um, like teenage girls and young adult women. Uh, I talked about one last month. This month I read You Will Know Me, which is a um, really atmospheric novel around a family told from the perspective of a mom about her daughter who is basically training to be an Olympian level gymnast and the sacrifices their family makes and the way she just doesn't know her daughter as much as she thinks she does. Um, and it is a beautiful kind of telling of how teenage girls and their parents think they know each other, but really, really don't. So of course, there is a tragedy that happens. And you spend a lot of the time wondering what is up with that tragedy as you see it unfold in just their daily life after the tragedy unfold and secret after secret is uh, comes to light. And it's it's beautifully written. And it's kind of creepy the whole time you're like, what is going on? This is just um, very mysterious, but also has like a thriller edge, but without a lot of violence, which I like. So I also loved The Paragon Hotel by Lindsay Fay. So Lindsay Fay wrote the book um, Jane Steele, which is a retelling of Jane Eyre, which is one of my top five books of all time, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Um, Lindsay Fay did a retelling called Jane Steele in which Jane Eyre is like, uh, she she's not just a girl trying to make it in the world, but she kills the people who get in her way. And it's fantastic, though, like you're rooting for her the whole time. So when I saw that Lindsay Fay had a new novel called The Paragon Hotel, I was like, I gotta get on this. Here's the thing about The Paragon Hotel is when I describe it, it doesn't sound like something that will be fun. But it was so fun and fast paced. It is the story um, told kind of in two timelines of a uh, woman in the 1920s who's like a gun mall for the mob. She takes a train from New York. She has to flee. Everybody has to think she's dead. You don't quite know why. When she lands in Portland, she has gunshot wounds. She's trying to hide. And so a porter, a black porter, takes her to the only safe space he knows, which is the only all black hotel in Portland, Oregon, and this is like 1929. Um, and so she's a white lady at this um, place right as racial tensions in Oregon are reaching a fever pitch. And this is all historically accurate. There was a hotel that the Paragon Hotel is based off of. Um, also the stuff with the mob is historically accurate. And uh, so there are run-ins with the KKK. There is a real white nationalist movement moving in Oregon during this time. And um, then there's also all the stuff happening with the, the Italian mob in New York at the time that she's dealing with. So all of that, and yet it manages to be fun. The characters are well developed. There is a twist that you're like, what? And it is just, it's super fun. It's also, I love historical fiction when it's well done and when it's not like overly sappy and soppy and 
too much detail. It's fast moving. I really recommend The Paragon Hotel. I also read American Spy by Lauren Wilkinson. I saw this on Goodreads. I don't know how this got recommended to me. But it is set, it's another kind of period piece, set in between the 60s and the 80s as um, a uh, African-American woman becomes a spy in the CIA and then in the future, in the 80s, she's running and you don't know why she's running. So it's kind of told in flashbacks of both her life and her time spying um, for the CIA and what went wrong that now she's running for her life with her kids really good. Fast paced. I read it in just a day or two. Um, I also, the book I have with me, I'm just finishing, is Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. I have to talk about this because I loved this is book two in the series. Um, the first book in the series was Vicious, and Vicious was amazing. It's about the idea of superheroes and right and wrong and how the good guy and the bad guy is really dependent on whose perspective you're looking at. So who you think in the first book, Vicious, is the bad guy and who you think is the good guy is it depends on whose perspective the story is being told by. And you can see why each guy thinks the other guy is the bad guy. So it's kind of like um, Professor X uh, in X-Men and Magneto in that they are raised together, grow up together, get their superpowers together. Um, and there's a very scientific medical base for how they get their superpowers. It's interesting. Um, they get their superpowers together and then they immediately clash and they have very different views because of their views about God and religion and having a purpose in life. They have very different views about what they should do with their powers. So they're kind of chasing and running away from each other through all the vicious. Well, vengeful is now that that world is set up, who else is getting superpowers? How are they getting it? Um, their roles have reversed slightly, but there's some people that it's just really good. I love the writing. The The writing is detailed, but doesn't get bogged down. It moves super quick. You keep turning pages and it's just beautiful. And the, the <laughs> you wouldn't think a story about superheroes that's like a mystery thriller kind of thing would be beautiful, but it's beautiful. And I just like fly through it. So it's kind of a big book. I think it has 490-ish 460 pages. Um, but I just fly through it because it's so much fun. It's a super fun series. It is darker and more violent. Like this isn't a young adult book at all. Um, because people's motivation is pretty dark is why I say that. Of course, you could read it and decide your kid is perfectly appropriate to read it. I highly recommend it. She also wrote the Shades of Magic series, which I haven't gotten to yet. Um, but that I plan on reading next. So that's a vengeful by V.E. Schwab. You can see more of the novels I read. I actually skipped talking about a lot of them. Um, you can find them all over on my Goodreads. I've linked it up in the show notes below and over at taraswigercom slash podcast260. Now, quick note, last week's episode I said was podcast260. It was actually 259. So if you're wondering where those show's notes are, they're at taraswigercom slash podcast259. You will find these links to where you can get all of these books. Of course, I always recommend you go to your library or you use the Libby app, which lets you get the ebook or the audiobook from your library. Um, but if you can't find it there or you just want to own the books yourself, go over to taraswigercom slash podcast260. I give you the direct link to buy any of them. When you buy through those links, I earn just a tiny little percentage and it doesn't cost you anything extra. That's how I buy more books to talk about and diapers for babies. <laughs> so thanks so much for listening. I hope you have a reading book filled month. I will be back next week with a new episode.